we're thrilled to have Heather Armstrong. Oh, did that go? Oh, it went up. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God, the captioning that's going to happen on this talk, you guys. Oh, man. A colleague of mine had suggested that I screen print shirts that say hairy vaginas because of what it has to do with what I want to talk to you about today. And the reason it's that big is because I'm obeying the rules of fixing your boring slides, Andy. <laughs> That's 450 point type right there for all y'all. So I am Heather Armstrong. Um, I am the author of Deuce. I've been blogging for 14 years and I am the fucking queen of the mommy fucking bloggers. <laughs> Which means that for the last 11 years, I have been exploiting my children for millions and trillions of dollars. <laughs> There's this one. She made me a lot of money. <laughs> this is good content. And then I realized that if I expanded my family, I could expand my readership. So I added this one. <laughs> you guys, I mean, and owe the money that I made, according to the Wall Street Journal, who interviewed me in 2008. And they wanted to know how much money I make. And I was like, I am from the South, I am from Memphis, and you do not ask me how much money I make. That's rude. And so they found some dude at some internet place who did a back of the envelope conjecture about it, and now it is gospel. I, I make millions and trillions. Which is, I guess, what I want to, that's what I want to talk to you about today is, I'm not going to tell you about the history of my website. You can go read my Wikipedia page. Don't you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to get into all of that. Um, what I want to talk to you about is the reason that I want to walk away from the millions and trillions of dollars. So I want to take off the queen. I want to take off the crown why I want to walk away from something that is working. Just last week, The Atlantic ran this story about my decision to walk away and its implications on the entire industry of mommy blogging. And I set the internet on fire, you guys. I mean, the mommy bloggers went crazy because who do I think I am to be interviewed by The Atlantic? I mean, who, do, who do I think I am to say that I choose to not do this anymore? Except what they saw on the screen was, Deuce declares mommy blogging dead. Well, it turns out that I'm really good at getting people to misinterpret me. Really, 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 really good at this. Uh, back in April, when I announced that I wanted to step back from blogging and not do sponsored content, the internet went crazy. They were like, oh my god, Deuce is gone forever. And even this dude, He wrote a post about my retirement. My retirement. <laughs> Thank you, Anil Dash, for calling him out on Twitter and telling him to read the words that I had written. <laughs> no, what I want to do is get back to the content that I originally wanted to write, which was the raw and the real, the not so pretty parts of life, the funny, the everyday life, my daughters, my dogs. I wanted to get back to... <laughs> oh. It writes itself. <laughs> so there's an artist, uh, her name is Liz Fair, and she wrote a song called Nashville, and um, and in it is a lyric that I have hanging over my computer, and it's how I write. And the lyric is, I can't imagine any better terms than naked, half awake, about to shave and go to work. I won't decorate my love. And she's talking about a romantic love, but that is the love that I have for my girls and my dogs, or my dog now and the, the life that I led and the stories. I, I didn't want to decorate the everyday and the ugliness of it. I wanted to celebrate it 
and I wanted to write it and move you and make you laugh. And I always did it um, as irreverently as I possibly could. <laughs> I was... Um, I was chronicling my baby bump with my second child, and some, some reader said, well, you are not glowing like you should be. <laughs> you, you have a scowl on your face. So I was like, I will show you a smile, and I will show you a scowl. Don't <laughs> challenge me on that. So this is my trademarked brand of crazy, as one critic put it. This is what I want to write about. And until 2011, I supported four employees, including myself and my entire family, on the banner ads that ran around this content, just banner ads. And I could write about anything and everything that I wanted completely unfiltered. And it was, it was glorious. I loved it. I really enjoyed it. And then you, you all probably know that the bottom completely fell out of the banner ad model. And what was, what was selling for three and five and seven dollars basically was selling for 15 cents. And so the only way to make money as a mommy blogger was to do sponsored content. <clears throat> and so I thought, okay, how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna make this work? I'm supporting three people in my entire family. What do I do? So if I'm going to write sponsored content, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking write sponsored content. I'm gonna write first what I wanna write, second, what does my audience wanna hear from me, and third, I'll make the brand happy. And so for two, re two years, I wrote the best sponsored content you've read on the internet, period. <laughs> You're not gonna find better sponsored content. And then in 2013, a campaign came along that was the beginning of the end for me. Banana Republic came to five authors who are represented by Federated Media and said, we want you to do a three-day getaway and we want you to write about it and we want it to be fun and untraditional and not stuffy. And I thought, you want me to throw a party and you're gonna pay for it, and you're gonna pay me to write about it, and twist my arm a little bit more, Banana Republic. And so, so then they said, um, can you use your gay assistant and um, his boyfriend, can they be a part of it? And my gay assistant was like, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> so I took a step back and I was like, okay, so they want my gay assistant to be a part of this and his boyfriend. And they want us to go up to Park City and spend two nights at Deer Valley. And they want us to drive this car the whole weekend. <laughs> also, oh, while you're up there, can you guys go horseback riding? The post wrote itself. <laughs> and my gay assistant saw all the pictures at the end and he said, I'm gonna quit if you don't call this rogue bag banana. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> and I also wrote about the horseback riding experience because they wanted me to. And I don't know if any of you guys know about, if you don't know anything about horseback riding, if you haven't been in a long time or haven't been ever, about five minutes into the experience, there's a lot of pain in your legs and your butt. And our excursion was two hours long. And 45 minutes into this, I was in so much excruciating pain that I literally was doing the breathing exercises that I had practiced to prepare for the natural childbirth of my second child. <laughs> and I, it was the, the, the breathing techniques that I learned in the natural mother birthing books that show the mother in all of her natural glory, that show all of the hairy vaginas. <laughs> oh yes, I did write that in that post. Oh yes, I did. How could I not? I'll take it off so you don't have to look at it. <laughs> So the initial reaction to that was, oh my God, this is the funniest thing you've ever written. Second reaction was, this is the funniest sponsored content I've ever written, or that you've written. Three, I can't believe Banana Republic lets you do this. This is amazing, I love Banana Republic. 
And then it was, Banana Republic let you do this? <laughs> and then two days later, I got a call from the representative at Federated. <clears throat> The Banana Republic was not happy about Brokeback Banana. <laughs> they were so upset, in fact, that they demanded I remove it from my website. They demanded that I take it down immediately and make it disappear. Poof. Because apparently you can do that on the internet. <laughs> and I said, OK, I'll take it down, but I'm going to tell my readers why. And that sent them into complete panic mode. So my author representative called John Battelle, founder and CEO of Federated Media, who is having dinner in London with the Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> <laughs> and she calls him up and she's like, John. So I get a call from John Battelle, who's upset because one, he's had to leave his dinner with the Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> And just a tangent, I, in that moment, I was like, are you seriously going to name drop with me, John? Really? I have 1.5 million Twitter followers, John. Like, do, do you have a direct message from Peter Frampton? <laughs> Tyra Banks, Boy George, how many inappropriate direct messages do you have from Lance Armstrong, John? <laughs> So then he's uh, doubly upset because Banana Republic has threatened to pull all of its advertising from every federated media property, hundreds of millions of dollars. And he sat there and scolded me like a child and said, how dare you do this? How dare you put 50 jobs on the line? How dare you do this? How can you do this, Heather? And I was stunned, but like my initial reaction was like, who didn't tell Banana Republic that they were working with this woman? <laughs> who at Federated didn't say, do you know who Deuce is? Do you really want her working on this? Like, where did that disconnect happen? But I stood my ground. That's who I am. It's how I've made my name. And they realized that. And somebody made some sort of like, negotiation. They came back and they said, OK, fine. You can leave it up, and we won't remove our advertising. But please take out hairy vaginas. Those two words, hairy vaginas, are the reason that all sponsored content going forward from that day has to be approved by a brand. I am responsible for that. <laughs> blame me. The brand gets a say now, but you know what? I, you can blame me for a lot on the internet. I mean, I don't know if you remember this. Andy just mentioned it. My mom is really proud of this. <laughs> <laughs> Sponsored content going forward from there was absolutely torturous and soul-sucking because the brand not only got to say, the brand wanted product placement. They wanted, they wanted rewrites. They wanted, the, they wanted to inject everything into your post, and they wanted no irreverence whatsoever. And I, I, I joke about John, but he and I have a really good relationship, and he took really good care of me in my, in my contract. Such good care, though, that I, I had to say yes to every campaign that came my way. And in the days leading up to the end of that contract, because I wanted it to end, I got handed a three-part series, a three-part campaign, three posts, where I had to stick my kids in the car, drive them to a fun activity, and play a word game in the car and take photos of them and then write about it. Except that when I'm in the car with my kids going anywhere, it does not look like this at all. It looks a lot more like this. <laughs> we are either listening to music and arguing about it, we're not listening to music and arguing about it, we're kicking each other's seats, we're screaming at each other, we're shooting lasers out, lasers out of our eyes. This is what it looks like. And that third post came along and my kids were done. They were like, we don't want to do this, Mom. And I had a deadline. And I had to coax and cajole and beg and bribe and scream and plead, please get in the car. Let's go do this. We have to do this. And they're like, please, Mom. They were in such a bad mood. And hours and hours and hours later, I got the content that I needed. I got the photos. I turned in a really good piece of writing that was completely manufactured. And I, at the end of that day, I felt 
like a completely empty shell of a human being. And thought, this is what I have become. This is how I'm making my living. So in the last almost 15 years of me doing this, I've experienced a lot of success, but I've also experienced quite a bit of crap. I was hospitalized for postpartum depression, which I wrote about, but that depression is now used against me. I'm that crazy woman on the internet. My divorce was played out across the internet, the dissolution of my marriage. I read about it on Jezebel. I read, it about it. I read about it in my local paper. I read about it in the New York Times. I read about it all over Twitter. People will recognize me in public. They won't say anything, and then they'll go home and they'll send me an email that says, I saw you at the grocery store, but you looked really haggard and gross, so I didn't want to say hi. <laughs> it happens all the time. My children's teachers read what I write. My children's friends read what I write. My children's friends' parents read what I write. All of my neighbors read what I write. I was sued by a publishing company. A lawsuit that was eventually settled, but not before my entire savings was completely wiped out. Just last week, a stalker found the hotel where I was staying for a wedding in Springfield, Illinois, found my room and slipped a really creepy handwritten letter underneath the door. And I've endured this for the last 15 years. You've got this scary lantern-jawed, papier-mâché, giant head look going on, like you're dying of cancer, which I hope you do. Maybe it's because the only person who really cared about your welfare was your ex, and look how you screwed that up. It's clear from your blog that you're just a bottomless sponge of need and desperation. I hope your kids sue you for every penny you ever made, because they'll need it for the therapy they'll have to pay for, for having you as a mother. Yeah, get over yourself. You're a blogger, not a nurse, not a teacher, not a therapist, not anyone who has devoted their life to actually helping people. You're a self-serving idiot who is pouring your children's lives all over the internet for the sake of fame and greed. You are a pitiful piece of nothingness. None of those things are the reason that I'm choosing to walk away. If I could endure all of that for another 15 years, not, I don't want to, but I could. I could totally do that. That's, that's not the reason. I told people that was the reason. The day that I had to turn in that last post, when my then five-year-old walked up to me with tear-stained cheeks, that day, was trying to coax her into the car. She walked up to me <clears throat> and through those tears said to me, Mama, please don't make me do this. I realized that my child had been written into my contract and that I was exploiting her. And so I choose to walk away because I can no longer make a living as a mommy blogger writing the story about everything, every secret revealed and every question that is answered in a spontaneous moment like this. The description of this, the adventure and the, the, the glory, the joy of this, I can't write about it and make you laugh because your kid does the same thing anymore to make a living. And that's what I signed up to do. Mommy blogging is not dead. My desire to do it the way it is being done is and if you can't say hairy vagina, we'll fuck them. <laughs>